Hey everybody, my name is Rick and I've been part of this Critical Security Controls version 8 editorial panel and have worked on previous control panels for years. This is the 13th in my video series going through a deep dive of updates to each of the new controls. I have links to my videos for controls 1 through 12 in the description below as well as a link for the CIS Critical Security Controls page to download your own copy to follow along at home. Today we're talking about control number 13, Network Monitoring and Defense. Network Monitoring Defense is a new control this year. It's made up of safeguards from version 7 controls 6, 12, and 14. It's tied to control 12, Network Infrastructure Management, that I went over last week. But where that relates to security architecture, control 13 is about security operations, which therefore makes it linked to control 8, Audit Log Management. We wanted to include this control in version 8 because we never really addressed security operations in previous versions of the controls. There is no implementation group 1 safeguards in this control. It's meant for more mature organizations. So let's look at the safeguards. There are 11 safeguards in control 13. And I'll put them up here and then I'll add the other ones as needed over here. Remember, we renamed them from some controls to safeguards, and we reorder the safeguards to align with implementation groups. And 13.1, uh, centralized security event alerting. This is different than 899, centralized audit logs we talked about before. There we say centralized logs, where here we're referring to centralizing alerting. The only places in version 7 we mentioned alerting was related to user count behavior. In the now retired control 4, controlled use of admin privileges, sub controls 4.8 and 4.9, we had log and alert to different admin account changes. And then in also the retired control 16, account management and control, in 16.13, alert on account log and behavior behavior deviation. And 13.2, Deploy Host-Based Intrusion Detection Solution is new. We already referenced network-based intrusion detection before, which leads to 13.3, we deploy network-based IDS. This comes from the now retired version 7 control 12 boundary defense, and 12.6, we deploy network-based IDS. 13.4, perform traffic filtering between network segments is somewhat based on the retired control 14, controlled access based on need to know. 14.1, segment the network based on sensitivity. And 14.2, enable firewall filtering between VLANs. And 13.5, manage access control for remote assets. This is a rewrite of 12.12, .12, manage all devices remotely logging into the internal network. 13.6, collect network traffic flow log, comes from 12.8, deploy net flow collection on network boundary devices. 13.7, deploy host based intrusion prevention solution is new. It basically refers to using an endpoint detection response, an EDR tool. And this is the first of the implementation group three only safeguards. Where 13.8, deploy network intrusion prevention solution, comes from 12.7, deploy network based IPS. 13.9, deploy port lever access control is new, but referring to network ports, not service ports. And this means like 802.1x or other device authentication. In 13.10, perform application layer filtering comes from 12.9, deploy application layer filtering proxy server. And finally, 13.11, tune security event alerting thresholds. This comes from control six, audit logging, specifically 6.8, regularly tune the SIM. Now that I've known the changes, let me pull that down. Let's do a deeper dive to highlight some of these 11 safeguards, and I'll bring up the details here. Um, so 13.1, centralized security event alerting. Here we recommend a SIM or log analytics platform for correlation and alerting. The idea is not to just have your tools sending alerts out without context. And 13.2, deploy host-based intrusion detection solution. This is basically an antivirus or an EDR tool. Both Windows and Mac have these native programs that would satisfy this. And 13.3, deploy network-based intrusion detection solutions. Pretty straightforward, though we also talk about implementing similar tools in the cloud environment. And, and we specifically say, use the term solution instead of inclusion detection system, indicating it doesn't have to be a formal IDS appliance. It could be another um, solution. 13.4, uh, perform traffic filtering between network segments. This goes back to segmenting network based on data sensitivity, and this will also provide some traffic logging and support for incident response. In 13.5, manage access control for remote assets. This is somewhat NAC like, you know, network access control. The intent is to scrutinize a device that is connecting, whether it's patched, does it have security software installed, it has the latest versions, you know, before allowing a remote connection. 
and 13.6 collect network traffic flow logs, this would be at the internet connection points where, where net flow logs would provide a record of all the connections to and from the external, you know, to and from internal to external systems. And it's handy to identify malicious activity, internal misuse, or assisting in incident response investigations. And 13.7, deploy host-based intrusion prevention solution. As I said, this refers to an EDR tool. And 13.8, deploy a network intrusion prevention solution. This is where, where, where IDS just logs and alerts for malicious traffic or events. What an IPS does will automatically block traffic or connection when it's triggered. And 13.9, deploy point level access control, refers to, as I said, 802.1x or other device authentication, is often combined with the access control features I mentioned in 13.5 above. 13.10, perform application layer filtering. This could be from an application proxy, a web gateway, or an application firewall. And, and finally, 13.11, tune security event alerting thresholds. This process is intended to reduce the noise and false positives. We recommend that this is done at least monthly. Let me get that down. Let's look at the upfront material or the narrative as we refer to it. And so for control 13, the overview is new. We talk about maintain comprehensive network monitoring and defense across the network infrastructure and user base. This is to set the scope to be the entire infrastructure and the goal is of monitoring. Because back in version seven and the boundary defense, which is the closest thing to it, we had said detect, prevent, correct, the flow of information transferring across networks from different trust levels with the focus of security damaging data, which seems unclear <laughs> as a goal. I'm not sure what we meant by we were saying correct the flow of information, but you know, I signed off on it three years ago. So in the why this control is critical, we start by stating the reality that we can't rely on network defenses to be perfect. Adversaries evolve, they get better, new vulnerabilities are discovered, new exploits are developed. It's an ever evolving thing. It's a journey and not a destination. So we stress that even if a tool works as advertised, it still takes effort to configure, tune, monitor, and keep it updated. The most organizations kind of have a false sense of security because they just bought the highest rated tool, but they don't configure a management properly and therefore it's not doing them any good. So we stress that these tools must support a process of continuous monitoring and learning and rapid incident response. Otherwise, they're just a bunch of blinking lights, they're dumping logs and alerts that no one's looking at or is gonna to respond to. And this process needs constituting itself an adjustment to reduce false positives, which could distract the team from real incidents um, or reduce the incentive of going after and investigating things because they just figure you know, it's just a bunch of noise. We talk about activity reports and metrics are important to help enhance security policies and support compliance reporting. We restate that the old adage that we've seen compromise organization news for years that have been hacked for weeks, months, or even years before it was discovered. This control is critical for reducing that dwell time and increasing the effectiveness of security operations and response capability. And we close this section by saying how good security operations will identify tactics, techniques, and procedures, or TTPs, of the attackers that we can feed into our security tooling and alerting, as well as share with you know, less mature peers to include in their security alerts. Changing pages to procedures and tools, we identify that most organizations don't have a security operations center or a SOC, but regardless of internally or managed security service, the basic security operations starts with understanding critical business functions, the architecture of the network, the data flows, and the infrastructure. This informs what controls need to be applied and what areas need to be monitored. We talk about the importance of trained team for incident response, which can be developed internally or outsourced. And then we mention that while having a SIM tool can provide value, that it isn't a complete picture and the use of event correlation tools can benefit log effectiveness. However, these tools must be used by trained staff who are the real key to get incident response and uh, identification process. Uh, Technology is very good for a rapid, accurate data collection, but it still takes a human to interpret and devise response actions. We're getting better with, with machine learning, but humans still need to be in the loop. And this is because the humans better understand the context, the TTPs of adversaries, and other related threat intelligence. And we close this section by describing security operations is a 
maturing process and that you would need to develop a knowledge base to help collecting indicators of compromise or IOCs to support the investigations and introduce threat intelligence to enhance protections and detections. And then once that's achieved, organizations can evolve to becoming proactive by introducing threat hunting, which is where trained staff search for issues instead of just waiting for alert. That's my overview for control number 13. Um, hopefully this was helpful to you to go over the difference between version seven and version eight and give a little color to what we were thinking. Uh, if you have um, any questions, feel free to go to cisecurity.org and, and uh, sign up for our work group, our workbench, where you can ask questions, get response, and maybe contribute to next version. And if you haven't already, please go to cisecurity.org and download your own copy. The link is for both of those are in the description. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks a lot. Hey everybody, as we know, we have no pets to share, but for the Halloween season, I'll be showing some Halloween figures this week and next week. Here's the first one. Have a great day.